Welcome back, and I've got another fun experiment for you today. What we're going to look at is a device that's all around us in the world, the transformer. So the transformer, um, I didn't know how I was going to start this video and what I really wanted to call it was can electricity uh, move through thin air, um, obviously without sparks, and I, I couldn't think of a good title for it. So um, let's just crack on and explain the transformer and how it's really clever. The way it uses magnetic fields to transfer uh, energy from one side of an electrical system to another. So building a transformer is not that difficult. What you need is two coils of wire, each with lots and lots of turns on it. Now, I never like these black box things they have in school physics laboratories, but inside here is a reel of cable. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that on this side and I'm gonna take another identical one. So inside here, there's another reel of cable and put them close to each other. Now they're not electrically connected at all. To get them a bit closer uh, and to help them work, and I'll explain this in a minute, I'm going to take some soft iron, some laminated soft iron, and put it inside uh, those turns of wire. Okay, they're still not electrically connected, um, but you might know something about soft iron. Soft iron has a strong ability to produce magnetic fields within it. And then I'm just going to put this clamp around it to hold the whole thing together. So this is a transformer, but remember that this side, the primary, is separated from that side by an air gap. The only connection between the two is magnetic. So let's now get it working. So to show you this working, I'm gonna wire it up to a power supply and uh, bear with me here, there's gonna be wires everywhere. What I like to do is to show you that the power supply is working. So I'm gonna connect a lamp to the uh, output of the power supply. And before any of you say anything, uh, I know what I'm up to here, I'm connecting to the DC terminals, bear with me. Uh, I'm then gonna connect uh, from the power supply, or from the lamp, it doesn't make any difference, they're in parallel, to this set of um, these, these turns here, this coil of wire. Okay, so that's that. And uh, we'll just check if the power supply is working. So, yes it is, uh, the lamp lights up fine, so I'll just turn that off. I'm now going to connect the second set uh, of turns, the second coil of wire, to this lamp. Here we go. And that's that done. And then I'll turn on the power supply. And there's a vague glow there, uh, but it's a bit of a disappointment this. This one lights and this one doesn't really come on at all. So we've made one small mistake. So I'm gonna change things now so we can get our transformer to work properly. So those of you who are watching me wire this up, I hope you were shouting at the screen and going, FJ, you've got this all wrong. It's no good connecting to DC. A transformer is an inherently AC device. So here we go. Connect it up to the AC and the lamp on this side lights as well, okay? Now, uh, you might wonder, so what's so exciting about this? But the thing that's really important is, I'll just tip the transformer on its side so you can see it. If I disconnect, you'll hear the uh, AC uh, magnetic field there. If I disconnect uh, the bar that's holding uh, the two soft iron cores together, if I take the soft iron cores out, okay, you can see there's no electrical connection between these two. And yet, when we put the soft iron in, here we go, and clamp them tightly together, we still manage to get energy across this gap to the second lamp, even though they're not electrically connected at all. And that's gonna take a little bit of explaining. So let's see if we can explain our transformer very quickly. So what we've got is AC here, that's really important, and that produces a current that's constantly changing direction. That will produce in this coil here a constantly changing magnetic field. 
that magnetic field will cut through this secondary uh, reel of wire, this secondary coil, and create an EMF in it, will create a voltage in it. And if we've got a voltage across the terminals and an external circuit, we can drive a current. So, changing current in the primary creates a changing magnetic field in the primary. That changing magnetic field cuts through the secondary, creates a voltage, and that voltage drives a current. So in fact, we can pass electricity over an air gap using magnetic fields, and it's not the electricity that's going directly across the gap, it's the energy, and the energy is going from this side as electrical energy to that side with an intermediary stage through the magnetic field. Now, just before we finish on this bit, we've got as many turns of wire on this side as that side. So it's uh, 240 on this side and 240 on that side. So apart from a few losses due to resistance and a little bit in the iron here, these lamps are pretty much the same brightness. But what would happen if we had 240 on this side and we only used 120 turns to pick up the magnetic field on the secondary side. Well, we haven't got as many turns picking up the magnetic field, so we don't generate such a high EMF. And in fact, this is a two to one ratio step down transformer. But if we go the other way, so we have 240 turns on the secondary and only 120 on the primary, the magnetic field here is being picked up by twice as many turns on the secondary, so this lamp should really be about twice as bright, and that's a step up transformer. Now, I won't go into the detail here of when do we use one to one and when do we use step up and in this case, step down transformers. But suffice it to say that step down transformers are very, very useful. If we've got a high AC voltage and we want to drop it down, this power supply is an example because it's connected to 240 volts AC and I only want to get out about five volts. Step up, however, is if we have a low voltage and we want to get out a high voltage. We sacrifice current there, so if we, we, we have the same power, but if we double the, um, the current in a system, we're going to halve the voltage. And in this step up transformer, we've doubled the voltage. Yeah, so the current must be halved to keep the same power. This is used for systems like uh, transmission lines and power lines, where we take a voltage from a power station and step it up to a very high voltage to transmit that electricity. And that's the subject of another video, why we would ever want to transmit electricity at such high voltages and such reduced currents. Finally, before we finish, um, the more observant of you might have noticed at the beginning of the video where I purposefully got it wrong and connected the transformer to DC, you might have noticed what happened when I disconnected. Um, have a look at this light bulb. So when I disconnect the DC, I'll cover that one up so it's even more obvious. So three, two, one. Do you notice when I disconnect, this one flashes quite brightly? Well, if you think about it, DC, constant current. But when we disconnect, there's a change in current from the constant value to zero. There's a drop in current, changing magnetic fields, generated EMFs, and therefore we do get a voltage out of the system for a very short period of time. It's like a tiny blip of AC current. So I do hope you enjoyed that very brief look at transformers. Obviously, if I was teaching this to uh, you in a class with me, uh, we'd be spending a much more extended time on this. But that was just a very quick whiz through what a transformer is. And the main point of this video today was to show you that we can transmit energy across a gap uh, electrically, in this case, from electrical on one side to electrical on the other without any wires at all. And I think that's rather clever and rather special. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.